Morning, everybody. We're live from the bird house. And today we're talking about the different birds you guys have been seeing in your yards and what kind of food you can best use to attract them this time of the year. I'm here in upstate New York. It's been quite cold. We've gotten quite a bit of snow too. It just keeps on coming. Um, we got a We've got a pretty nice dusting over the weekend. It just kind of kept falling. And if your feeders are anything like mine, they've been emptying out really, really quick. The birds are hungry. And it makes sense because it can be hard for them to find the food that they've cached away or any kind of natural food sources if there's that blanket of snow. So don't be surprised if your feeders have been getting more attention than they usually do. So as always, we like to know who's on. You can say hi in the comments. If you have questions, absolutely, you can throw those in there. And we always love to know what kind of things you're seeing, what kind of birds or creatures, if you've got neat tracks underneath your feeders, put those in the comments too. We love to know what kind of things you guys are all seeing. Um, first thing I'd love to talk to you guys about, give you an update, is we started something on our Facebook page called a caption contest, a photo caption contest, uh, because we've been, we've gotten so many great photos in. Um, you guys send, are so, so great. You send photos in throughout the year that we share on this broadcast, but then we also have a photo contest that starts every year in September. And we had so many great submissions. We thought, how fun would it be to have a photo caption contest highlighting some of the photos that might not out of one a prize and this was the first one we've ever done it started last sunday and uh we put the photo up gave you guys time to put your comments on it to caption uh the photo the best you could and the the uh the captions with the mo with the most reactions with the most likes or you know smiley faces hearts attached to them won a prize so this was our first one and we got some really great submissions and there was actually a tie for the winners and the two winners for this caption contest were Jeanette Ward and Rhonda Rizzo and Jeanette captioned this photo mommy lost her head and Rhonda captured it duck duck goose and so these are our our winners for the caption contest for this past week. They will both receive gifts, uh, gift certificates for $25. And this contest will go on every other week. So this Sunday, we'll have another photo up for our caption contest. And we'll make sure to highlight that for you guys next week so you can see what it is and you can have some time to put in your captions. But the captions with the most likes and reactions will win a $25 gift certificate. So can't hurt to enter. You just never know uh, if you might win. And then I'll give you guys an update too about Saturday. We had a walk at Mendon Ponds Park with the Genesee Valley Audubon Society, which was a lot of fun. There was a great turnout. So thank you for everybody who came out. It was pretty cold. It was kind of windy. We still had some luck seeing some birds. So here we've got everybody, uh, a shot of, of some of the crew out there with a seed in their hands, um, trying to attract some of the different birds. And we did see several different species. And the, the key to getting birds to come to your hand is to go out by where there's some shrubs and some trees and uh, having some kind of cover nearby really helps to bring the birds closer to you. And another tip is the seed makes a big difference. So uh, we used here what we have at the birdhouse called our chickadee blend. And there's something in there for any kind of bird uh, that's really going to come to a feeder and including these birds at Menden Ponds Park that will come right in front to your hands and feed. And the key item that they really love in that blend are peanuts. So chickadees, like we see here, we saw lots of chickadees on Saturday. They absolutely love the peanuts. So if you are feeding in your backyard right now and you want to add a little bit of something to help entice more birds to come, something with peanuts in it is really, really great and really ideal. So people had good luck with this chickadee blend. And if you are in the Rochester area and you want to go to Men and Puns to feed the birds, you can always stop in at the store. We have small bags of samples of it for you. Absolutely free. You can come in grab yourself a little bit of a, bit of, a, of a chickadee blend bag and go out to the trail and enjoy the birds. So just a little 
tip there as well. But some of the birds we saw Saturday, nice and close, were the chickadees. This is the black capped chickadee that we have here in upstate New York. And then nuthatches. So saw a couple different species of nuthatches. This is the white breasted nuthatch. And again, they really like the peanuts. They like sunflower hearts. So the seed definitely makes a difference, both if you're trying to attract these birds to come to your hand or in your feeders, you'll notice that the seed does make a big, big difference. So if you have a seed blend right now that has a lot of yellow stuff in it, so if it's got a lot of the millet or the cracked corn in it, the birds will, will eat that, but they tend to throw it on the ground first and go to some of those larger seeds like the peanuts and like the sunflower seeds. So um, basically the more enticing and delicious the seed looks to you, the more delicious it will be for the birds. So um, getting some kind of a seed blend without those fillers in it can make a world of difference and always making sure it's fresh as well. If it sits in a warehouse for a long time, um, that can make a difference. And if it's not fresh, the birds won't come to it. So freshness is also key. But we were lucky enough to see some of these white breasted nut hatches and red breasted nut hatches. So this is a bird that tends to be more common in the winter time here and there were some out there on saturday that we got to see nice nice and closely so this is your red-breasted nuthatch and then tufted titmouse there were tufted titmice out there um, here's a picture that was sent in by bob who had a tufted titmouse in his heated bird bath uh, but they were out there as well in some pretty good numbers Here's a picture sent in by Mark of a tufted titmouse. So a lot of you guys are seeing those out there in your backyards and out hiking. And then this is what happens after the tufted titmouse comes to your feeder and gets itself its seed. You can a lot of the times see it grab that seed, fly to a branch, pin it between its its feet and then peck away at the seed. The tufted titmouse, just like the chickadees, love peanuts. So if you're trying to attract the tufted titmouse to your feeder, make sure you've got some kind of a, a feeder or a seed blend that is offering peanuts. So that is the tufted titmouse. And then there were also a lot of American tree sparrows out there. And this is a photo of an American tree sparrow at Menden Ponds Park that was sent in by Mark. Um, but the tree sparrow is going to be one species that we can find now here in our area, but we're not going to see them once it starts to warm up more. They're going to go further north. Um, they're gonna migrate up further north where they will breed. So right now is a great time to see tree sparrows. In the spring and summer, you'll see more of what are called chipping sparrows. They look kind of similar. They both have that chestnut cap on the top of their head. But the tree sparrows, which we have right here in this photo, are going to be larger. They've got a little dot on their breast, which you can't see in this photo here. Um, but there were quite a few of them out and they were all chattering about on Saturday. So that was a lot of fun. So that is the American tree sparrow. This is going to be a winter bird for us here in upstate New York. And we also saw juncos and so has Cheryl who sent in this picture. And she says, I've visiting right now. I have taken hundreds of pictures. So this is a dark eyed junco, just like that American tree sparrow. This is a bird that's here for the winter months. So not going to see it so much in the spring once things start to warm up. We saw some of them in the trail on Saturday as we were kind of leaving, they, they came around uh, and, and were cleaning up the trail cleaning up the little seeds on the ground and that's typically where you can find them so if you are trying to attract juncos to your backyard they tend to be a ground feeder so they're going to clean up the little scraps that are on the ground so if you do have a seed blend that has some of that millet and cracked corn that's been thrown on the ground don't be surprised if you see the juncos cleaning up after it they will be bouncing around on the ground eating that they like sunflower seeds they like the shelled sunflower or the sunflower hearts which are just the insides of the sunflower seed and then they'll also eat millet too so they eat several different types of seed but this is your dark eyed junco another bird that we have here in the winter time and cheryl also sent in this picture of a european starling so a lot of people are getting european starlings coming to their feeders and they can eat a lot of seed they can eat a lot of suet um, they are quite a beautiful bird when you take a look at them they have this really pretty iridescence to them they've got 
kind of speckled polka dots all over them, but they usually come in large flocks. So some people tend not to want them at their feeders. Um, the best thing you can do to try to avoid getting starlings at your feeder would be to put out safflower seed and safflower seed is that white seed that's about the same size, size as sunflower. The starlings don't really like it. If you've been getting grackles, it's only a matter of time before more grackles are flowing into the area. They don't like safflower seed, but birds like cardinals really, really like it. So that's something you can do to try to keep this, the starlings at bay, but attract some other birds as well. We also have things that are called upside down suet feeders and the starlings have an issue. It can be difficult for them to feed from the upside down suet feeders. So a couple things you can do to try to keep those starlings at bay. And cardinals, there, there's been lots of cardinal activity. I've, I've been having a pair of cardinals in my backyard, which is really exciting. They seem to be pairing up a little bit. You might be hearing the males start to sing. Um, that Every morning I've been hearing them start to sing some of their songs, not the, the whole song, but they're almost practicing um, for the breeding season ahead. And this, here's a photo of a beautiful female cardinal that was sent in by Cheryl. And the cardinals, the key to getting cardinals is going to be getting a feeder with lots of perching room. So a tray, a tube feeder with large perches. They love sunflower seed and that safflower seed that the starlings don't like, the cardinals really love. So there's different things that you can do to attract those cardinals to your backyard. And you'll start to see them Disband. If you've had a large flock of cardinals in the winter, they're not as territorial because it's not breeding season. So you might have a nice big flock of them in the winter. But if you start to see less of them, that makes sense because they're going to start getting more territorial. Um, they're going to start to pair up and you won't have those big flocks like you might have had in the winter. Here's another photo sent in by Cheryl. This is a great photo of a downy woodpecker and a red-bellied woodpecker. The red-bellied woodpecker being here on the left-hand side. And the red-bellied woodpecker, this is a female. And you can tell it's a female because she has a patch of gray on her head here. If it's a male, the red will go all the way from her bill to the back of her head. So that is your red-bellied woodpecker. And then this is a downy woodpecker. And this is a male downy woodpecker because they have red on the back of their head and the females won't. So on Saturday, we're going to talk more about woodpeckers telling the differences between the males and the females. And, um, uh, and we'll share some of your photos there of the woodpeckers. Lots of people have been getting some great woodpecker activity. And it's hard to see here, but it looks like this might be a tail prop feeder. This is one of those suet feeders that has the projection on the bottom. And if it's not, you can, the, the woodpecker definitely though is using its tail to prop itself up here on the tree. So the idea, the, uh, it, the idea with the paddle tail feeders or the ones with the projections on the bottom is to make it easier for the woodpeckers to feed. They're not flopping around on just a little cage. And here's another red-bellied woodpecker. So people have been getting lots of woodpeckers in their backyard. Really common in the winter time. Here's a picture sent in by Rich, another paddle tail with a red-bellied woodpecker on it. So um, in this picture, I love because you can actually see a little tinge of that red belly that the woodpecker has. So this is a picture sent in by Mark of a woodpecker that grabbed a little something to eat and then flew away. And you can see that little tinge of red on their belly there. Pileated woodpeckers, people are reporting coming again to their, their suet feeders. They're around here all year round. So keep an eye out for the pileated woodpeckers. They're very loud when they call. They almost sound like a, a monkey <laughs> sometimes. Their call will just echo through the forest and so will their drumming. If, they, if, if they're pounding on a tree, um, that can be very, very loud and echo through the forest. And flickers, people are still reporting flickers coming to their feeders. This is a northern flicker. Not going to be your most common backyard beer, bird at feeders, uh, but in the wintertime when food is more scarce, they do come to feeders a little bit more often. So this is the northern flicker. And I'd like to add, if you see something that looks like a woodpecker, but it's not one of your common backyard 
birds. It could be this. This is a yellow-bellied sapsucker, and they've been seen more often in the winter months than in the past. So last year, there were quite a few of them that were reported, and they're not really going to come to a feeder. You're more likely to see them on a tree in your backyard, um, or if you're out hiking, they're going to be a little bit bigger than, than your downy woodpecker, but not as large as your red-bellied woodpecker. So kind of in between, and they're more thinner in stature too. So um, so they're not going to be as plump as like your northern flicker or the red-bellied woodpecker. And they have that yellowish tinge on them too, but this is the yellow-bellied sapsucker. So you just might see them out and about too. They're, they're going to be more common in the spring once we're in migration season, but people have been seeing them around in the winter months. So keep an eye out for them. Yellow bellied sapsucker. Bluebirds, people are reporting bluebirds still coming to heated bird baths is, is the thing that they're coming to most often. Uh, but they'll also come to some feeders that have suet or that have mealworms in them. Sometimes the sunflower hearts, the bluebirds will come to. So people are still seeing bluebirds around. It's getting almost to that time to think about housing for some of these birds in the spring and summer having a bluebird house is the best way to really keep them around. It can be tough to attract them unless you have the right habitat. They like an open area, open habitat. Um, but we'll talk about housing as we get more into the spring. But bluebirds are one of our earliest nesting species that we have here. So whereas most species aren't going to start mating until say late April or May. Um, the bluebirds will start sometimes mating even in March and late March. So it's kind of weather dependent if we still have a lot of snow on the ground and there's not any insect activity, it's usually delayed, but they do nest quite early for songbirds here in our area. So that is the Eastern bluebird. There's all kinds of different birds that'll come to bird baths, including this beautiful male, Northern Cardinal. So a lot of you guys have been seeing and submitting photos of these cardinals. They're quite showy, especially when they start to sing, which they're starting to do. So gorgeous, gorgeous cardinals out there. And then the blackbirds. We've, uh, we were just talking about starlings, which get grouped into that blackbird family coming to feeders. This is a picture of a brown-headed cowbird that Sally had at her feeder. And people have been reporting those a little bit more often than they have in the past too. So this is your brown-headed cowbird, but then also people have been talking about getting some red-winged blackbirds here and there at their feeders, and the males are quite distinctive. So on the left here is the male red-winged blackbird. The, the red patches or yellow patches on their wings aren't always as, as bright this time of the year. But I thought I would also show a picture of the female red-winged blackbird, which is here on the right-hand side, because they look nothing at all like the males. So they uh, they almost look like an overgrown sparrow. They've got kind of a yellowish wash on their face. But if you see something like this at, at your feeders, that could very well be a red-winged blackbird female. Um, there's some other birds that will look a little bit similar that I'll show you here in just a moment. But here is the, the blue jay. We were talking about peanuts and birds that love peanuts like the chickadees and the titmice and the nuthatches. Blue jays also absolutely love peanuts both inside the shell. Um, so you can get a full peanut in the shell and they'll eat those. They'll also go for the inside of the, the, the peanuts, the peanut pickouts too. So that is the blue jay. Some birds that will look similar to that female red-winged blackbird that you might get in your in your feeders and in your yard are going to be house finches. House finches are going to be more than the red-winged blackbirds are right now. But this is the male and female house finch. We've talked a little bit about them. And then there's purple finches. Some of you guys have been getting purple finches. They're going to be larger than the house finches. They don't have the same stripes on them. At least the males don't have the same stripes on them as, uh, as, as the house finches. So the purple finches less stripes and the house finches will have more stripes. But then here's the female purple finch who's going to have more distinct streaking on her than the house finch female. So some of these birds look pretty similar. The purple, the female purple finch could be a little bit difficult to try to identify and tell apart from the female house finch or even the red-winged blackbird female. But if you look at the red-winged blackbird female, she's got kind of that yellowish wash on her face. She's got a, a pretty sharp 
bill too. If you look at that bill, it comes to a pretty good point. For female, house finch is going to have kind of a stunted, a more short bill. And um, her striping is not going to be as distinctive as this female purple finch. So um, you're most likely to get right now at your feeders house finches, but in the wintertime, people do get purple finches more often than they would in the summer. So keep an eye out for them. Some of you guys have been getting red poles. This is another kind of stripy brown bird, but they're going to have a red dot on the top of their head. And common red poles, um, there's been several cited around the area. Not as off, not, not as many and, and often as they were cited last year at this time, but there's still some around. So we're not having a huge eruption year like we have in the past with the red poles, but they have been cited around town. Um, pine siskins, only a couple sightings, so you're probably not seeing any of those at your feeders right now, but this is another stripey kind of indistinctive bird. Look at that bill though. They've got a really sharp bill and they do have um, yellowish colored wings um, and they're also quite stripey, so they're going to have more yellow on them than say the female house finch. So just some different birds you might see in your backyard right now. Carolina wrens are another one. Um, you can hear them singing. They've been quite, quite vocal. They've been coming to suet feeders. They've been coming to these seed log feeders that we've been talking about quite often. Um, Carolina wrens really, really like like those. And what I like about these is you don't have to fill them too often. You don't have to change them out too often because they do take the birds some time to go through them. So um, the bugs, nuts, and look bugs, nuts, and fruit log has been super, super popular with all the birds in everybody's yard. Just like our chickadee blend that I showed you earlier that we used over the weekend to feed the birds, um, this bugs, nuts, and fruit log has something for just about every kind of bird that's going to come to a bird feeder. There's a food in here that they will eat, so that's been very, very popular. You guys have been out birding and, and sharing your submissions. So if you're out by any kind of open water, there's some really cool activity going on right now. This is not going to be your most common bird to see this time of the year. It's pretty rare to see a heron right now, but Mark sent in these photos over at Lock 32. He says, I was photographing on the canal yesterday at Lock 32 and came across a great blue heron fishing on some open water. So you just never know what you might see. Great blue heron tend to go further south for the winter, and we rarely see them here in the winter. There's been some scattered reports of them around, uh, but they're not going to be your most common bird to, to see this time of the year. But keep your eye out around any kind of open water, especially if there's some cattails. You might see a heron, um, a heron in there going after some, some fish, so really cool. Uh, photos here sent in by Mark of this heron that got itself a nice big fish that was out by Lock 32. So that is your great blue heron. People are still seeing long-tailed ducks. And again, any kind of open water, large bodies of open water, keep an eye out for these long-tailed ducks. We've got some good waterfowl diversity right now in the area. Um, here's some long-tailed ducks in action sent in by Mark over at the Arondequoit Bay uh, and Pier on Sunday. So that's a really good place to go as long as it's not iced over. Uh, Arondequoit Bay is a great place to look for some of these, these waterfowl species. And here's some more long-tailed ducks. This is a great photo because this is an action shot here of them just about to dive under the water. We have diving ducks, we have dabbling ducks, and these diving ducks will dive under the water to grab their food and then pop back up somewhere else. So this is a neat, neat photo showing those birds just about to dive into the water. So these are long-tailed ducks, another species we only have here in the wintertime. And here's the common mergansers. Common mergansers are around right now. This is a male and female. We also have another species called the red-breasted merganser, and here's some more photos of them. They to look similarly to, very similarly to the female common merganser, but if you're lucky enough to get a, a good up-close vision of them, either in a scope or in some binoculars, look at the color of their eye because the red-breasted merganser will have that red-colored eye. And then my personal favorite of the mergansers, the hooded merganser, another species that's around right now. They're going to be smaller than these red-breasted and common mergansers, but these are all other species of diving ducks that will dive under the water to get their food and then bop back up somewhere else uh, when, you're, when you're watching them. And uh, 
We've got some scalp here and it's some more photos sent in by Mark on um, some, some scalp, which is another waterfowl species here that was sent in again over at the Aronaquite Bay and Pier. Mallards, we have mallards all year round. Here's a mallard resting in the snow, tucking its bill into its feathers. Golden eye, speaking of the color of the eye to identify the bird, you can see how this waterfowl species gets its name. It has that bright yellow eye. So this is called the common golden eye, another waterfowl species you can find right now. And the white-winged scoter, if you're out by any kind of open water, check, keep an eye out for the white-winged scoter. Depending on, uh, on, on the positioning of them, it can be hard to see that white wing, but you can see there's a little white patch here on this one, and uh, you can see it here as well. So we, there's different scoter species that you can find here, black scoter, uh, surf scoter, white wing scoter is going to be your most common that you'll see right now though. So that's your white wing scoter. And redhead. Uh, redhead, like their name suggests, they've got uh, very reddish colored feathers on the top of their head. Another waterfowl species to be out on the, on the lookout for right now in our area. And then birds of prey. Um, there's been lots of different birds of prey out there right now. Earlier in the season, we had lots of snowy owls, um, the short-eared owls you can still see um, by open fields, northern harriers during the day, which are hawk that'll fly low over fields as they're hunting. And then if you're out by the water, keep an eye out for bald eagles. There's been a ton of bald eagle activity. Here's a juvenile bald eagle um, that was seen by Mark over the weekend with all of those different duck species that he sent in. Um, bunch of bald eagles here, and here's a couple of them flying together. So the juveniles don't get that adult plumage until they're a few years old. So they're very dark colored uh, for the first few years of their lives, the bald eagles are. So lots of them seen, again, by any kind of open body of water. They eat mainly fish, so they are going to need that open water to feed. Now here's another bird of prey, which is much smaller. This is going to be in your falcon family. This is a merlin, which was sent in by Chris. And she says, I spotted this merlin sitting in a small tree in the Penfield Community Center parking lot today. He was there for at least 25 minutes, long enough for me to drive back with my camera. So when we're talking about different falcon species you can see right now, there's of course our peregrine falcons and um, Rochester is well known for the, our peregrine falcons that we have the falcon cam for uh, in the city. We've got some nesting peregrine falcons every year that have a, a live stream camera on them. Uh, but then there's also a couple of other species like this merlin, which are going to be smaller, and our kestrel. So these are also falcon species. The kestrel is going to be about the size of a morning dove. They're not very big, you know, morning, morning dove, blue jay size. So very, very small bird. The merlin tends to be a little bit stockier, but again, around that same size, the merlin isn't as colorful as the uh, kestrel is either. So if you see something that's about kestrel size, but it's more brownish in color or, or very gray in color, it could very well be a merlin. So be on the lookout for them as well. They'll hunt small mammals mainly right now in the winter, but in the spring and when things warm up, they'll go for large insects, things like grasshoppers as well. Um, kestrels like this picture here of a kestrel sent in by Gina. You can see by open fields. Look for them perched on telephone wires. That's a really common place for them to perch and they'll oversee their territory and look for prey items. And Merlin, you can find kind of in, in different habitats. You can find them in cities. You can find them um, like Chris just saw one in a, in a parking lot at a community center in the suburbs. So they're going to be maybe more by the water um, or, or, or where there's more trees. And the, the kestrel is kind of like more of an open area. So a couple other birds of prey that we have here right now. And then of course, the Cooper's Hawks, your Cooper's Hawks, your sharp -shin Hawks, getting lots of reports of them coming into people's backyards. We've talked about them in the past and the differences between them, Cooper's Hawks being the bigger of the two. Uh, they're the one you're most likely to see in your backyard right now are going to be the Cooper's Hawks. So um, the sharp -shin Hawks are going to be smaller. On the left, here's a picture of a sharp -shin Hawk. And on the right is the Cooper's Hawk. Cooper's Hawk has a bigger head. They've got a rounded tail and they just have more of a menacing look to them. The Cooper's Hawk has 
or the, excuse me, the sharp shinned hawk has more of a rounded head and they've got a squared off tail and they're going to be quite small. So they're a very, very small bird of prey. So you're most likely to see the Cooper's hawk in your backyard right now. And they go after birds. So just like your bird feeders will attract different songbirds to your backyard, those songbirds are prey for birds like the Cooper's Hawk. And here's a photo sent in uh, by Anne of a Cooper's Hawk that went after a starling in her backyard. So they do feed on songbirds, definitely. And to round it off, of course, our red-tailed hawks are here all year round. And if you see something that looks similarly to a red-tailed hawk, but the coloring is a little bit off, could very well be a rough-legged hawk. And this is another bird that's here during the colder months of the year. So they normally are way up north in the tundra during their breeding season. But right now uh, they have flown south to Rochester where it is nice and warm for them for the winter time. So keep an eye out for rough-legged hawks as well. They are definitely around in our area right now. So that is everything we have to share with you guys today. If you have any questions, you can definitely put them in the comments or you can share what kind of things you are seeing out there uh, in your backyard or while you're out hiking. Margaret says, good morning, all. Um, Dina says, good morning, everyone. Flickers at my suet. First time ever. So Dina is also getting flickers coming to her suet. So when we're talking about different woodpecker species that you can see right now. Flickers, people are, are seeing more so than I've heard in the past few years, people are getting flickers coming to their bird feeders. It's a really, really cool sighting to have when you uh, look out at your feeders and, and you see a flicker on your suet feeder. Uh, Jonathan says, good morning, bluebirds in our backyard. So Jonathan is also getting bluebirds. So bluebirds are typically a bird that aren't as common in the winter time, although we've been getting quite a few staying here all, all year round. Just like robins, they tend to go south for the winter, but there are some that will stick around um, all winter long if they can find the right food sources and, and a place to hunker down. You might just be getting bluebirds all year round. So Really cool sighting there from Jonathan. Um, Dina says, I love those captions of our of our caption contest. Yes, so look forward to another photo being posted on Sunday that uh, we'll, we'll be looking for captions for. So we'll, we'll highlight that photo on Tuesday. Next Tuesday, we'll show it on the broadcast. And um, you can you can have a look and see if you can come up with a great caption for it. Um, Ship says hi from southwestern Pennsylvania. Hello. Well, thank you for joining. Um, Stephanie says, does your knee treat also have peanuts in it? So I was talking about how peanuts can attract different birds, how the uh, the titmice and the chickadees and nuthatches, how they all really like peanuts in their seed and in their seed blends. And yes, we have a blend called neat treat that doesn't have any shells on it. And that is peanuts. So it's the insides of peanuts. It's all ground up uh, sunflower hearts and some cracked corn in there. So that is uh, all things without shells. So you don't have to worry about shells on the ground, um, but the birds will absolutely um, eat the peanuts in it and they love the sunflower hearts in there too. And let's see, uh, Margaret says, I had a pileated woodpecker on the neighbor's tree at dusk last week. Sadly, lighting not good enough to take a good photo, but captured him on video. Very impressive. Very impressive. Yeah, so the uh, pileated woodpeckers are quite, quite impressive. The um, They... They're not only quite large, but they're loud. If they are going after a tree, they'll leave large rectangular holes in the tree. So they definitely leave their mark <laughs> wherever they go. So pileated woodpeckers are around here all year round. They can't, some people have good luck with attracting them to feeders. Other people never really get them at feeders. So it all varies, um, but they're definitely around in the Rochester area all winter long. So really cool sighting there from Margaret. Uh, Sally says, had a huge flock of blackbirds the other day and I was surprised to see many grackles and some red-winged blackbirds amongst the cowbirds and starlings. Thought they came later in spring, maybe a sign of early spring. So yeah, there have been some people reporting some grackles, um, just kind of like the bluebirds and the robins. Most of them are further south for the winter, but there are still some around. Uh, 
the cowbirds are another one, the red-winged blackbirds, and they're going to be the first birds that really start coming back in the spring. People will start to see these huge flocks, mixed flocks of blackbirds, and usually it's exactly the, the birds that you're mentioning here, the cowbirds, the red-winged blackbirds, and the grackles. And so um, they usually start to roll in like early March, mid-March or so, you get some of these large flocks. So it could be that, uh, there, that this was a flock that was not so much south, far south, but it was just slightly further south of our area and started to flow back into the area. Um, so it's uh, it could be not necessarily a sign of early spring, Bring, because birds tend to come back around the same time every year, regardless of the weather. There's really, it doesn't really make that big of a difference. Um, just think of like your hummingbirds and your orioles. They tend to come back around the same day every year, you know, can vary a day or two. But in general, it's not going to have these big major swings based on the weather. Um, but because some of these birds are here all winter long, um, they could be grouping up and, and having a nice big flock where they'll they'll feed together. So here's a picture of uh, the brown-headed cowbird. And the brown-headed cowbirds have more of that stunted bill. The males will have a brown head and kind of an iridescent body. But if it's a juvenile, they'll look more like this bird here in this photo. And then the, the red-winged blackbirds here, male and female, look very, very different, but they'll still form these flocks and, and join the, the cowbirds and the grackles. So people have been reporting some grackles and some red-winged blackbirds. So it's not totally out of the question that, that they're around, um, but it's just not super common right now this time of the year. So that, that's a pretty good sighting to see right now with it being so chilly out here. <laughs> um, Richard says, the only time I've seen a yellow-bellied sapsucker is past years ago at Cornell Lab of Ornithology's very sapsucker woods, and they are amazing woodpeckers. Yes, so if you've ever been to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, their wooded area that you can hike through is called sapsucker woods, and this is who it's named after, the yellow-bellied sapsucker. So they're definitely around when we're talking about woodpeckers leaving signs of themselves and trees, how the pileated woodpeckers leave large rectangular holes in trees. Yellow-bellied sapsuckers will leave small straight lines in trees. So if you ever see a tree that has a bunch of just little lines of holes in it, that's going to be from the yellow-bellied sapsucker. And we'll show you what those look like um, on Saturday when we talk about some of the different woodpecker species and the differences between them and the signs that they leave. But you can definitely tell if a yellow-bellied sapsucker has been around because they do leave some pretty clear signs in their trees. Um, Margaret says, red-bellied woodpecker feeding on bugs, nuts, and fruit right now. So we've been talking about the different foods that you can put out for the, the, the woodpeckers, uh, including suet and those seed logs. And that's what it sounds like Margaret has. The bugs, nuts, and fruit seed log has been so, so popular over the past few weeks. Um, the birds have really spoken and they they really, really like it. So I'm um, not surprised that you've got some good birds coming to your bugs, nuts, and fruit log. Lynn says, I've had a couple of blackbirds about the size of a cardinal, long, thin beak, and a few white tail feathers. Any ideas? So let's see, a couple of blackbirds about the size of a cardinal, long, thin beak, and a few white tail feathers. The white tail feathers is throwing me off. Unless, um, so there's a couple of things. Um, it could be red-winged blackbirds that you just don't see the red on their wing. They're going to be about the size of a cardinal. They've got the longer bill. Um, the, the white tail feathers is throwing me off, but it could be if it's, smaller than a cardinal, when these juncos, like in this picture here, when they fly away, they have white streaks on their tail that are really, really obvious. So when they're in flight, you can really see those two on either side of their tail. Um, they have two really bright white lines when they fly away. So it could be those if, um, could be if you've got maybe fluff, really fluffed up juncos that are fluffing themselves up to stay warm in this, in this cold weather, when they fly away, they've got the white flashes on their tail feathers. That could be, um, crows sometimes have some white on them, um, but that's more on their wing feathers and not their tail feathers. And they're going to be significantly larger than the cardinals are. So if you can snap a picture, that's the best way to tell. Um, but it could be some kind of a, of a blackbird, like a red-winged blackbird. 
Um, Alyssa says, saw Cooper's Hawk lose its lunch to a few crows. Grr. <laughs> so sounds like she's got some com competing birds in her backyard, the Cooper's Hawk uh, and some crows, both of which are pretty substantial sized birds. Kathy says, I think I heard a mockingbird yesterday. Are they common in the winter? Very good question. They are not common in the winter, but we do have them around here and there. I saw one a few weeks ago, which kind of took me by surprise. Um, so they're so they're not going to be a very common bird um, here in the winter time, but we do get a few. Some people do do see them throughout the winter. They're related to the gray catbirds, and those are going to be less common in the winter time. Uh, we really don't have them here during our winter months, but mockingbirds every once in a while, you do see them here in the winter. And it wouldn't surprise me if they're starting to sing too, just like the cardinals. Um, mockingbirds can have a really large repertoire of songs and they'll start practicing those to attract a mate. The more songs they know, the better chances they have of attracting uh, a mate. So wouldn't surprise me if you're hearing a mockingbird starting to sing. They There definitely are some that are around. Uh, and Lynn's saying, not seeing the white feathers today. Hmm. So um, another thing it could be too, I mean, sometimes birds are lacking pigment and it's something called leucism. So you might just every once in a while see, you know, a cardinal that has a white patch on it or, you know, anything, a robin, any, any kind of bird can be leucistic. So it could even just be some kind of a blackbird that has some leucism to it and it has some white feathers because it's lacking some pigment. So that's another thing that it could be. And that's, that's not completely rare, but it's not going to be something you're going to see every day in your backyard. So that would be a pretty neat sighting right there. If you've got some kind of a leucistic um, blackbird, that could very well be what it, what it is, what it was. So I'm curious if you're able to snap a photo, definitely send it in and we'll show it on our next broadcast. So it looks like that's what everybody's comments and questions are for the day. We'll be back on Saturday where we are going to do a deeper dive into woodpeckers. So we'll talk about the differences between males, and females, the different species we have around here, of course, how you can attract them to your backyard and the signs that you might see of woodpeckers in your backyard or when you're out hiking, we'll go over those as well. So until then, you can absolutely always send us in your photos. Just send them into our Facebook page is the easy way. You can also email them to us at info at the birdhouseny.com. We do have a website up and running, which you can uh, use to browse some of the products we have or even purchase them online. And that's the birdhouseny.com. And we'll see you on Saturday. And until then, enjoy your birds. Bye-bye.